a there's a guest that I had to get on because he's been in the public eye on cable, on radio, his political views, his sports knowledge, his experience, amazing experience of so many different things. And just recently he became a friend, but I always admired him. Now I'm a psychologist, but I there's three people why I really got into media. And I really felt that if you put a microphone or a camera in front of you, you could really help more people than a one-on-one session as a psychologist. So the three people I always admired, I'm going to put them up on the screen, was Johnny Carson, Phil Donahue, and our next guest, Steve Malsberg, uh, who uh, was a local New York boy. He went through the, he got through the ranks. He was an intern. He went to high school and college in the New York area, and he substituted for the great Art Russ Jr., and he had such a great career, and he continues to have a career. So I wanted to ask Steve Malsberg to join the show here. Steve. Thank you for coming on here tonight. Are you kidding? You just you just put me you just mentioned me in the same breath on the same short list in the same top of the lineup if you will with Johnny Carson, Bill Donahue who by the way in his waning days on MSNBC before the Iraq invasion um, I was a contributor to to his show on MSNBC and and you put me on uh, on that list in that lineup, I but, wow. But, but Steve, you're American television radio host, syndicated columnist, political commentator, host of the Steve Walsberg own, formerly of Newsmax TV, WABC, WR uh, Radio. For me, I watched Johnny Carson when I went to sleep, and during the Yankee games, if they didn't play or after the games, I listened to you. And then Phil Donahue, kind of, he always had those controversial topics that he had on NBC primetime. And so, yes, for me, for this guy from New York, yes, you're on top of that list there. Well, I that that I don't know what to say. Um, you've rendered this talk show host speechless with that uh, that <laughs> comparison. I thank you. Uh, well, well, Steve, you have such a career, and just fill it real quick. Fill our listeners and viewers in a little bit. Why things came to an end recently on your cable show? Yeah, well, I, I had been doing, uh, after after my radio uh, at WABC for, for 23 years in WOR, the Crosstown Rival in New York, and uh, many years on cable TV, filling in, talking head, you name it. Uh, I went to Newsmax TV, did the Steve Malsberg show. Then uh, we parted ways, and I went to RT America. RT America was funded in part by a, a form of the some, some part of the Russian government. Um, and uh, it, for the last three years, there at RT America, I had been doing a show called Eat the Press, where I took a critical look at the liberal media bias, which is just insane. And it was a great show. Uh, got a lot of press coverage, got a lot of hits, as they call them. Breitbart wrote up a lot of my interviews, had a lot of great guests. Um, so did Real Clear Politics, uh, and put post videos and, and Gateway Pundit and others. Um, and uh, unfortunately, after the invasion uh, of, by Russia of Ukraine, well, the invasion of Ukraine by Russia, um, a lot of outlets started dropping RT America because the R in RT uh, stood for Russia, and um, including DirecTV, Dish, and whatnot. So uh, RT America closed down operations uh, on March 3rd all over the country. They just they, their whole network stopped, ceased and desist, if you will. And so I'm looking for the next opportunity, and, and while I'm doing that, I, I kind of started up... Uh, Playing around with. I mean, if if I decide to go with this full steam ahead, it will look better. But I I, I put together or I started going on a, a YouTube channel that I've created, and it's called Steve M Talk, which is the same as my Twitter account, same as my Facebook, same as my Parlor, um, same as my uh, Instagram. Steve M Talk is the channel. We got some videos. I did one that I know you're going to play. Um, and uh, I urge people to uh, please go to Steve M. Talk on YouTube and follow the channel. So, so Steve, I mean, this, is, uh, this world is upside down in so many ways. Why is it important for you to continue to do the work that you do, no matter what level it's on, but getting that voice heard to so many people? Well, I think, you know, again, I don't know. The, 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 it depends on people's politics, but I think, I think people, there, there are stories out there that are not being told. Um, for instance, we're all concerned about the safety of children in school. And, you know, and, and the left talks about, well, we got to ban pork, we need more gun laws. And we got to ban guns. And we got to take guns away 
you know, from uh, people who might buy them and guns, 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 they're focusing on guns and the new laws that are passed overwhelmingly, um, you know, affect law-abiding citizens. But at the same time, there were those on the left, uh, including the biggest teachers union in the country and the, 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 uh, the, the California State Senate that are looking to make it easier for someone to shoot up a school. How? It's going to be described in the, in the YouTube video that you're, going to, you're so kind to, uh, to show the people tonight uh, in just a few minutes, I guess. Uh, you won't believe what you're going to hear. Now, I blame, I blame the left-wing NEA, biggest teachers union in the country, for, for, for doing this, and the, the Democrat-controlled California Senate. But I blame the Republicans in the video, too, for not being outraged about this, not letting the public know about this. When you hear about this, I don't care if you're a Democrat or a Republican, you'll be outraged because it puts our kids at risk. And it's, it's going on under the radar. Nobody cares. So that's one reason. I mean, it, it, it's to make people aware of, of what is going on in this country, in this world, that the media won't talk about. And if they do, they, they plant it. And that more times than not, even the Republicans won't address. For what reason? I don't know. You know, you, you bring on this topic. Uh, it's so it's so very much needs to be heard because, I mean, it's hard hitting, but it's right in front of us. And for some reason, majority of Americans don't know what's going on. And I think it's uh, who you are and shows like uh, what you do is so very important at this point in time because the world is so polarized right now. It's so divided. The country is so divided. It's so confusing for adults, I can only imagine what it is for the young people. So we are going to show this podcast over 11 minutes in its entirety so people get an understanding of what you're talking about, but also a preview of what you're going to be talking about in the future. I mean, you don't hold back on some of the issues that need to be told. No, and, and, and just so you know, there is a follow-up because you'll, if you watch, you watch this video, and it's about the National Education Association, the first largest teachers union, and the California State Senate, as I said. But the American Federation of Teachers did something the other day after I made this video, which they're the second biggest teachers union in the country. And it's even, it, it's almost more outrageous than what I talk about in this video. So that's going to be probably the next one. Probably I'll put a post up tomorrow or Friday. So yeah, and and. After that, who knows? Whatever, whatever strikes me, whatever I see, whatever I hear that I say, and believe me, there's never a shortage of, of topics. Whatever bothers me the most uh, and I feel I need to get out there, I'll put it out there. No doubt. This is the Chapters Wrap Wednesday Night Live. We're talking to Steve Malsberg. And uh, if you want to join in, please do. It's 727-441-3000. I want to thank uh, Carmine and Anna and Bobby behind the scenes. And thank you, Steve, for... Uh, Joining us, but before we show this podcast, we do something. You're a New Yorker. Uh, we do something called a New York Minute because things could change in a New yep. York Minute. So if you're ready to play this little game of ours, I'm going to give yep. you some uh, names or things to talk about in rapid fire. Just tell me what your thoughts are about it. How's that? Absolutely. All right, here we go. New York Minute with Steve Malsberg, the first person. Art Rush Jr., what does he mean to you? Oh, I mean, Art Rush Jr. Uh, took me to WABC with him when he was hired by WABC uh, in 1981 when uh, that station got the Yankee Games. And I was at, uh, at WMCA at the time where I had worked with Art. He brought me over there. And without that, I don't know, you, Steve, you and I would, wouldn't have met probably and wouldn't, have, wouldn't be talking right now. I, I owe that man so much. And. May he rest in peace. And he was a he was a he was a genius. Do you think if you never met Art Rush Jr., you wouldn't be in the place you're in now? Well, it's hard to say. I mean, would I have wound up at WABC, and if, and that's where I met my ex-wife, but I had my my wonderful son with. I mean, would things have been how different would things have been? I might have right. been lucky enough to get in media. Um, I might have been able to continue. You know, I had been at MCA as a young young kid, but. I don't know. I don't know. I'm just thankful for the way things worked out. Wow. Okay. How about um, uh, Roe versus Wade? Um, very controversial right now because what's happened in this country um, for over 50 years there, you know, um, what's your thoughts about what's going down right now? Well, 
I think Roe, the, the, the original Roe v. Wade decision was uh, a poor decision. I think what the court decided uh, the, a few weeks ago was the right decision. Leave it to the state. But I think it's very important, and here again, it's very important for people to understand, and even the Republicans don't say this, but when you hear anybody, the vice president, the president, the, any an activist, a media person, anyone, say it's a woman's body, it's a choice between her and her doctor and her God, blah, 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 blah. They are in favor of abortion on demand up until birth. Understand that. The, the bill that the Senate, Chuck Schumer and the Democrats tried to get through the Senate recently, was abortion on demand. The American public does not favor abortion on demand. They favor overwhelmingly and have for decades. Just go to Gallup, read the poll on, on abortion. If they take it for decades, they always favor restrictions on abortion. So I think the court did the right thing. Leave it to the state. But beware of those who parade around saying it's a woman's right to choose. It's her body. Men don't have vaginas. Men don't have uteruses. They mean any time up until birth. Be careful. That's right. The January 6th hearings. Huh. It's a joke. It's a charade. Um, people, I think the latest poll showed that 50% or slightly more are watching it. They said either a lot or almost a lot or they care a lot. But here's the deal. When they ask those same people to list the priorities for the uh, for, and their concerns for the country, that doesn't even register. It's it, that, and, and by the way, abortion are at the bottom. It's inflation, it's gas prices, it's food prices, it's education, it's school. It's a bunch of different things. I, I, I just, this is, a, this is sick. Um, Nancy Pelosi would not allow the Republican leader, Kevin McCarthy, to put the Republicans on the committee that he wanted. She denied them the access. You found two people like uh, Liz, Liz Cheney and, and um, Adam Kinzinger, and, you know, and they're playing along. They might as well be Democrats. This is being staged to coincide with the midterms, and they'll continue it to come up until the election in case th th their goal is to prevent Trump, is to get him in jail, but to make sure that he can't run again. Well said, well said. Brittany Griner. Uh, look, I think it's a terrible situation. She's not the first person to, uh, you know, wind up in a in, in, in the prison of a of a foreign country that we're we're not on good terms with. Um, I it, she pleaded guilty. That apparently was part of a strategy to facilitate some kind of prisoner swap. And if they could prisoner swap her out, then they should. Uh, but I don't buy all this stuff from people who are saying, "Oh, if she was a male, if she wasn't." Um, if she wasn't married to a woman, I don't know what she categorizes herself as. Uh, things would be different, but nobody cares because of that. Um, no, I, I, I don't buy that. And if she did wrong, she should have known better. But I don't think she belongs in prison for whatever, 10 years or so. So hopefully they could get her out. All right. And the last one before we get to that podcast, uh, should federal and or state gun laws be changed? Well, I mean, I, it, it depends what the gun laws are. I, I, I think we have Second Amendment rights, and I think that when, when, the, when the left try, and the media, included the media certainly, when they try to convolute this whole thing into, um, oh, if you let you know, gun owners carry, you know, gun owners carry all over the country. They keep saying, oh, yeah. I mean, the governor of New York, for instance, after the Supreme Court decision that said the New York the city law is too restrictive, people should have an easier right to carry to protect themselves. She passed they passed more laws making it tougher for gun owners. Gun owners, legal gun owners, law-abiding citizens, they're not the ones who are going to shoot people. The ones who are going to shoot people are the ones who couldn't give a rap behind about the gun laws. They never could, they never will. And if you ban guns, look what happened to the former prime minister in Japan. The guy made his own gun. The bad guy will always find a way to have guns and do damage. Don't handcuff the law-abiding citizens. Steve Walsberg, thank you so very much. God bless you. I am so happy we connected recently. You've been uh, one of my uh, people I looked up to, and to now to meet you, to see how you operate, to see what you do. It's a true blessing, and I'm glad we have well, this friendship. Let me, let me just say, let me just say, 
I, I can't tell you how impressed because I've been on this show with you. I've been on another show with with uh, with you and our friend Ray, and and, and I, I can't tell you how impressed I am with your 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 ability as a talk show host, your performance as a talk show host. Everyone that works with you, because I don't know them personally, but the product that they put out there, it's top rate, top notch, A one professional. So don't you know, I'm not going to let you go away just praising me. Um, I, you know. You weren't born into this profession kind of the way I was, if you will, and, and you pursued something that you love to supplement what, you, what, what your chosen profession is, and you would never know that you weren't born into it from, uh, from listening to you and watching you, and, and that goes for your whole crew, some of whom are professionals in the broadcast industry, as you are now, but you know what I'm saying. Yes. You should be very proud of yourself, and I'm, I'm happy we connected as well. Thank you, Steve Malsberg. Uh, great. Let's check out this podcast, and we'll definitely see you down the road. You got it, Steve. Thanks. All right. God bless.